Hello and welcome to Share Spotlight. Today's guests are Steve Howson, he's the CEO, and Ian Anderson, consultant of HealthPerm. Welcome to both of you. Can you give us a brief outline of uh, the business of HealthPerm and the operations in both the UK and the UAE? Yeah. So uh, the HealthPerm group owns a, a number of companies, um, both as you say, in, in UAE, in the UK and in the Philippines, which is where we primarily source our candidates from. So in the Philippines we operate as a company called GHR, uh, which is a licensed recruitment organisation. They're licensed with the Philippines o Overseas Employment Administration. Um, in the uh, UAE we operate uh, an IELTS training centre, an English language school, and in the UK we operate as Health Perm Limited. I think the key thing there is, unlike other companies, we are wholly owned. So other companies in this area that work on international recruitment quite often subcontract the work out to uh, third party companies in different geographies, but with Health Perm we own And clearly, obviously, the business is expanding. Have you, have you hit your numbers for, for the year? Yeah, I'm delighted to say we have. Good. Uh, as of Monday. <laughs> Uh, you recently made a revision to your business model to include um, candidates taking the International English Language course um, and you set up a training centre in the Philippines. Can you explain how this works and the benefits to candidates and to the NHS Trust who they apply to? Yes. Yeah. So the, the reason we took that decision is it was clear from speaking to a number of trusts that they had gone to the Philippines, uh, done recruitment campaigns and um, they weren't having a high degree of success in terms of the landers that were actually arriving. It takes up to a year for candidates to, to arrive in the UK following an interview process. So we decided to focus only on those candidates with an IELTS 7, the English language qualification of 7, because we felt that actually that had a much higher probability of success for our customers. Uh, and so since March this year, that's all we've offered. In terms of being able to source those candidates though, only 11% of people that take the IELTS exam in the Philippines achieve that score. So for those candidates that, that score a 6 or a 6.5, we actually offer them a posting to the Middle East, be it Dubai or Abu Dhabi, Qatar, etc. With a view to enrolling in the language school we, we've opened there and following completion of that posting, hopefully by then they've increased the language skills to be able to come to the UK. So essentially we are sourcing high level candidates initially, but for those that don't reach the required level that we're working to, we provide additional input and training as well as an opportunity to deploy to jobs outside of the Philippines. You increased your mandates with NHS Trust in the UK and with healthcare organisations in the UAE. Uh, perhaps you can explain your, your sales team and uh, the expansion plans you've got for this. Okay, so we, we're relatively small in the UK at the moment. We have, um, for this year, we've, we've focused with just one business developer. However, we are increasing that uh, next month to, to triple in size. And we anticipate uh, winning at least nine new accounts next year in the UK. We currently work with nine hospitals, um, but we aim to double that for, for next year. And to be able to satisfy the demand, we're increasing our footprint quite considerably. So we will virtually double the size of the operation in the Philippines by moving to larger premises uh, in Manila next month. And we will open a second office uh, in a place called Cebu before the end of Q1. Additionally, we will open uh, extra language centres in different countries in the Middle East, again during the first half of next year. Ian, perhaps you could explain why Filipino nurses are so important to the NHS? I think they are absolutely critical. I mean, if you think about it, there's 40,000 nursing vacancies in, in the UK at the moment. The recent changes to how uh, training is funded means that there's been a 23% drop in applications for, for nursing places. The reality is there will not be enough nurses coming through the UK systems. We have to look abroad. We have to look in other places. Filipinos have a good track record in, in the UK. Uh, there's every indication that there's something like 200,000 uh, nurses who are unemployed in the Philippines. It's a market that is there and they make good nurses and it's absolutely critical. We are not going to be able to solve this problem without overseas nurses. It's, it, the problem is compounded by the massive drop 
in EU nationals applying to join the NHS, 89% reduction over the course of this year. That gap has to be filled. And that gap will probably even get bigger as Brexit continues that, on its That course. gap will inevitably get bigger. A combination of the changes to how places are funded and the drop in EU nationals coming in, it, th there has to be a solution such as the Filipino nurses. And have they settled quite well into the UK and into the NHS trust that they've been placed with? Where, where, they, where they've been placed? I mean, Filipinos have been joining the NHS for a number of years, going back 10, 15 years. And one of the great things is that, particularly if you can get a cadre of Filipinos joining together, they, they, they do settle and, and they, they do embrace the opportunities that the UK gives them. Currently your focus is on um, recruiting in the Philippines. Can this model be expanded into other geographical areas? Well, uh, as an organisation, we're, we're focused very much on deployment of Filipino nationals. Um, our initial uh, target is working with nurses because that's the largest uh, cohort of uh, staff that the UK needs. However, going forward, we will begin to look at other allied health professionals from Filipino uh, nationals, and also we will move into new geographies. So for 2018, our focus will be very much on opening up new markets and new customers in both the Middle East and the UK. But from 19 and beyond, we aim to uh, move into other English-speaking markets as well. In summary, what do you think makes Health Perm a compelling investment case for potential shareholders? Why, why would you consider Health Perm as an investment? Well, I think we've got a good business model. Um, we've proved the concept this year. We've had landers both in the UK, uh, who've gone all the way through the uh, recruitment, the immigration process, and then satisfactorily completing their OSCE exams after arrival in the UK, and they've settled into their hospitals and they're contributing to the, to the life of those hospitals and treating patients. Um, Additionally, we have, an, as Ian has just said, there's an unsatisfied demand there, and that demand is not going to go away. Our challenge as an organisation is to scale up uh, and meet the, the demand that we have from UK customers, and indeed in other countries. And I think that um, with the expansion and the increased footprint we aim to put in place next year, I think we have every probability uh, of success. Okay, as we said earlier, there's 40,000 nursing vacancies at the moment. That is going to grow. Somebody needs to help the NHS to fill that gap. There are a number of players in the market who are not doing that as well as I think they should. I believe Health Perm are in a position to do that with the rigour and with the professionalism that the NHS needs. So, for example, uh, health perm candidates have a 92% pass rate for the OSCE exam. The national average is 58%. That level of preparation and aftercare means that people hit the ground running, ready to add value to the NHS, which is really, really important when uh, resources are tight, when things are difficult, when we've got big queues in A&E and all that sort of stuff. It's really, really important that we get great service. Stephen Ian, thank you very much for coming in today and talking to us. If you'd like to find out more information about Health Perm, please go to the Shares Magazine website, www.sharesmagazine.co.uk, and type in Health Perm, and you'll find more information about the company, news and share price.